Hello to all the readers out there that are interested in 19th century English literature. My name is JC Strunk, and today I will be talking to you about the book Emma by Jane Austen. Um, like I said, it is 19th century literature, and the basic plot of the book, it takes place in Highbury, England, which is really close to London, so it's like a suburb, kind of like a town outside of London, and it's basically just a book about the society in this town and how they interact with each other in their daily lives, who's who, um, what social situa situations they come into contact with, just basically a book about the daily life there. The main character is Emma Woodhouse, who the book is named after, and it's all about this girl who's a teenage girl who's living with her father, Mr. Woodhouse, and they're kind of a well-off um, family. Her mother died a long time ago, so she had kind of like a governess or like a, um, not necessarily higher than a housemaid, but someone who she looked up to as a motherly figure named um, Mrs. Weston. Um, she's married to Mr. Weston. The book starts off with her getting married and leaving Emma's life. So it's kind of, this book is the beginning of Emma's life as independent becoming an adult. The other characters are Frank Churchill, who are who is Mr. Weston's son, who's a prominent character in this book because um, he's kind of an eligible bachelor that comes around and the girls are interested in. There's Harriet Smith, who is Emma's closest friend in the novel and who she's trying to play matchmaker to and find her the perfect husband who meets her standards. Then there's Jane Fairfax, which is like another... Um, character another girl in this novel that they communicate with there's mr knightley which is another eligible bachelor that's a family friend that's kind of always been close to the woodhouses and kind of everybody into that community but specifically to emma in a very special way then there's mr elton another eligible bachelor that is well off who emma multiple times has set up people with including our friend harriet smith and there's mr martin who is a farmer who Harry is super interested in, but Emma has no interest in for her being with. Anyways, um, the book is just basically that overview. It's daily life in Highbury, England, just their social interactions. It's mostly about Emma and how she's growing as a character and trying to control everybody else's lives because she feels like she has hers so figured out and that she doesn't want certain things and that she has all these right answers for everybody. But really, it's about her figuring out herself what she wants to do with her life and seeing how that she thinks she's so right all the time, but seeing so many times that she's wrong and learning from that. So she's kind of a very independent girl who is just living her daily life. Um, I have a couple of favorite scenes in the novel or things in the novel that I liked. The one that's most amusing is an incident between her and her best friend Harriet Smith and Mr. Elton. And they are all writing these poems or riddles that Emma records into a book. And so Emma's in the process of playing matchmaker between uh, Mr. Elton and Harriet and Mr. Elton writes a poem or riddle into to one of the girls which Emma convinces Harriet that the poem or riddle is for her but really Emma is so blinded that the poem is meant for her and not for Harriet so she's trying to set up her best friend with the guy who's really into her and so many times it's happened where Emma is burning her best friend and it's just so sad because she just thinks she has it all figured out but she really doesn't um I honestly do not recommend this book to anyone who is of this generation just because it's really confusing in the beginning. One, um, because if you look right here, this is the introduction and you think this is like the book, but this is not the book. This is, this is not the book. This is just introduction. It's like a hundred pages. So I was a little confused at first, finally found the actual beginning of the novel, but I had some really good commentary. Um, I don't suggest anyone of the IY generation reading this novel just because it's not this century. It's really hard to under understand. You have to literally, the conversations are so long and so boring between everybody. It doesn't make sense at the time. You have to filter through the information to even figure out what anybody's talking about because they repeat themselves so much. They're so not concise. Any, every uh, chapter could be cut down to like two sentences in our generation with the conversations that they have. But if you like long drawn out novels and are into romance and fancy words, 
This is the book for you. I cannot express how much unnecessary banter there is, but it's also humorous in the end. Um, with all respect, all in all, it's a beautifully written book for that generation specifically. You cannot deny that Jane Austen is a great author. She's just interested in a lot of in unnecessary conversation. It's titled a humorous book, which I guess is humor for the 19th century. Um, not humor of today. It's definitely more of a girl book. Guys, don't read this book. You will put it down in like five seconds. It's definitely a girl book. Girls who are about falling in love and finding true happiness, this is the book for you. If you're a feminist and believe in feministic values, this tale is not for you. She changes her mind in the end, which is so upsetting. That's why I didn't, did not like it. She went from having such strong values about her life to doing the complete opposite. But all in all, really boring book, but if you like really good, beautiful literature of the 19th century, this is the book for you. Thanks.